Now the question was, what's our favorite song to play live? Is that right? I think we all have our favorites. I think um, if you've ever seen us, how many of you have ever seen us live before? Yeah. Yeah. So you know we're kind of aggressive and have a lot of emotion on stage. We're like, it's like that movie over the top where he turns his hat around and we just all kind of turn the animals up. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> But uh, I think we're big fans of the songs like Death of Me, uh, Breathe Into Me, uh, Let Go is a very fun one for us to play. I think it has a lot to do with the intensity of the song and uh, a lot about what the lyrics are trying to say. So I would, uh, we hate playing pieces. We will never play that song again. <laughs> it's on the set list tonight. You will hear pieces. So it's the only song right there. My favorite song to play is the song on the new record that we don't get to play live yet, so. Oh. Oh. What was it like recording with the Prague Symphony? Oh. We actually didn't get to go to Prague, and there was only one song on the lap, or only two records we have out, that um, they recorded the whole streamline in Prague, which was a pretty epic thing. Um, a couple of, our producer and the guy actually did the stream arrangement was in Prague to record it, and uh, it was pretty, uh, yeah, it was, uh, the song's called Break Me Down, if you don't know, but that's the song that uh, had the strings from the Prague Symphony, which was amazing. So we saw a lot of pictures and stuff like that, but I think they recorded it in some sort of like haunted castle, so that just made it even more red for us. Are you guys excited to play with the wedding? These guys are punks. <laughs> We don't like this, guys. This is the last show that they'll be doing with us. That's <laughs> true. But no, we don't. Joe's acting a fool right now. He used to be the drummer for the wedding. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, now he does bass guitar. We've got two bass players in the band. The question was do we have egos? Basically. <laughs> Um, I guess the only two egos in the band would be my brother and I. Because <laughs> we like to argue a lot. I don't know, I'm just kidding. It doesn't really have anything to do with ego. I think there's just, uh, you, being out here on the road, you experience so many different things and get to see so many different faces. And this is actually one of the first times we've ever done something like this where, you know, sometimes we'll do a festival and we'll do a, a question and answer and it's just a group of people, but it's just uh, level heads. So now we can see every single person's face. It's kind of interesting, but uh, we just see so much and experience so much on the road that it's, um, it's it's interesting what we have to deal with as far as you know the, the different personalities in the band and how we all adapt to certain situations. <laughs> We're a family, so we argue like a family. We're all brothers. We've known each other our whole lives, and uh, Anthony and I are you know twins, and we have our twin arguments, but we love each other five minutes later. But yeah, he goes. I don't know, we don't do the rock star thing. We're not, you know, rock stars don't sit in front of a hundred people and answer questions, you know, so. All right, um. I'm the peacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you maintain uh, your relationships with family, with friends while you're on the road? iPhone. The question is, uh, how do we maintain our friendship, our relationships, our friends and family? Um, we eye chat a lot. We, uh, we talk on the phone constantly. The question was about we had a horrendous accident. Um, I actually just got a new tattoo. It's still healing. But I've got the date of the accident on my arm. It's 11-2707. I think that was a date that will live in red infamy for the entire time we exist. Uh, we were on our way home from South Carolina from a late show and hit a guardrail at 75 miles an hour head on. Our tour manager was ejected from the van. The entire side of the van was ripped off like a tuna can. We all had contusions and concussions and you name it. Uh, it was uh, just an eye-opening experience. And, uh, I think it gave us that, um, I guess, emotional fuel that we had been looking for when we started tracking innocence and instinct. And uh, that's just something. We still have road cases on stage that were in that accident, so it's a daily reminder when you look at that road case and the whole side of it's ripped off. Um, we lost most of our gear. It took us two and a half years to recover our gear back. We didn't have insurance. So, yeah, it, it, it screwed up good, but it brought us all closer. I was the one that was driving, and uh, sometimes I find myself thinking about it, and it brings, you know, it gets me choked up because I don't know what I would have done if I lost one of these guys. So. 
he asked, he, well, he's mentioned that the wreck uh, was an inspiration for our second record, wants to know what our inspiration for the third record is. <laughs> um, we're a very secretive band. We like to reveal things in little bits and pieces and just antagonize all of you. Um, but uh, the new record um, is inspired about finding your true identity. I think everybody struggles out there with try, trying to find out who they are, and uh, they're worried about what everybody else thinks and what this more this stupid world has to offer them. And uh, this is uh, this is going to be an anthem record for everybody out there that's struggling to find out who they are in this, in this life. And it's called "Till We Have Faces." Um, Anthony. Is this your microphone? Oh. Um, Anthony and our producer Rob wrote over 60% of this record. Um, as you know, we, uh, our former guitar player Jason uh, left the band a year and a half ago, and uh, he uh, has his office downstairs at Rob's studio, and he's actively writing with us. We're still great friends. It wasn't a, wasn't a bad breakup or anything. We don't regret each other or anything. That, happened, but um, yeah, Jason is a writer on this new record, so yeah. We, uh, we tend not to fix things that aren't broken. We, we stuck with the same group of people to write this right now. <laughs> <laughs> question was, tell you about our most exciting gig in the last five years. I would have to say, yeah, I would agree. You just played the GMA of Dub Awards. Um, if you don't know anything about GMA, GMA Week basically celebrates all gospel music for an entire week in Nashville. Nashville's basically taken over by every uh, major gospel act out there, and including Unsigned Band, you name it. It's a pretty awesome experience. But um, every year, usually, it's held at the Grand Ole Opry. And uh, if you know anything about the Grand Ole Opry, the history of it is just nothing but country and bluegrass. Um, we were the first band in history, in the history of Nashville, Tennessee, to hit the opera stage with this kind of music. We were, we were we kind of walked in and we did our sound check and stuff and people were just like, oh man. <laughs> we actually took the stage with Brian Headwell, which was also a very, very cool experience for us because uh, we've always been so inspired by that guy from, from his career in corn back to you know what he's doing now. And uh, when we took the stage that night, in the front row was Franklin Graham and Michael W. Smith and you know, Chris Tomlin and you know, Toby McKeenan and, and all, all the people that we've looked up for so long and now they're looking up at us and we're playing at this show and then not to mention Brian from Corn is, is standing next to us playing guitar. Um, it was, I think it was the ultimate experience for anybody that was at the GMA Awards. Um, I think after, after, the sh after we played we, had, we got a standing ovation and then backstage, we went backstage and it was just an electric feeling. Everybody was just like, that's what we needed. And it, it was a really encouraging that for sure. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a, that was probably the last five years, the most amazing show we've ever had. question was, what's our relationship with Christ as a band? Um, it's, it's, it's a question we get asked a lot, because I think a lot of people are, are scoping our music, trying to find what it is that we're trying to say when it comes to our faith. And I think that, first and foremost, as a group of guys and a family, we hold each other accountable to everything we do, and we, uh, we love each other like brothers, and we, we, we have a, the, the strongest foundation that we possibly can, individually and as a group, in Christ. And uh, it's something that we've, you know, Mike was a was, was, was born uh, a preacher's kid, so we've always given him a hard time about that. He's the one that had to memorize, <laughs> memorize all the books of the Bible, and, and uh, you know, he could always smoke us in Bible trivia and stuff like that. But, um, I don't know, it's, it hasn't been hard for us at all. It's just we do a lot of mainstream touring, and uh, you know, this, this last year or so, we've done so much more of the, the Christian touring realm, and it's been, a, it's been an interesting thing for us. Um, we're just it's something we're just trying to get used to because I think our calling as a band has been to be out there and, 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 and playing those dark places and playing the clubs and playing the you know the, the you know mayhem fest or 
you know, whatever you name it. Uh, what's a what's another crazy Ozfest or whatever? Just all the you know the the the, the big mainstream things, and um, it's 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 something from the very beginning that we had our hearts set on that we want to go out there and inspire and be a light in a dark place. And, and I think it's for us it's 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 paid off because we've seen so many amazing things happen just by our actions rather than our words. I think we just step on stage and we try to win people over with our with our music and our and show them our hearts and just kind of be as vulnerable as we can. And and we've seen some amazing things happen. So the question was uh, we we covered a song by Duran Duran on our new record and if you want to know if there was any <coughs> Um, we were flirting with the idea of doing a cover song, kind of as a B-side, and uh, we ended up liking the version we recorded so much, we're like, it's got to be on the record, so... <laughs> um, we wanted to do a song that, you know, went along with the theme of the record, and uh, that song, musically, is very difficult to play. It's, uh, uh, it sounds like it's you know just a average song or whatever, but it's a difficult song to play. And we were challenging ourselves as musicians when we were writing this record to you know we want to elevate ourselves each and every time because you know we're we're charged to be the best that we possibly can be as Christians, and, and that's all that we want to do is when we release a record, we want it to be our best because that's what everybody deserves. That was the first time we met Brian, and uh, we get to spend two days together. Uh, you do all kinds of camera blocking and interviews and rehearsals and stuff like that. As you go, we went through the entire award show before the audience got to see it, so everybody got to do their part. But we got to spend two days with Brian, and uh, you know the, that brief time we learned a lot about his heart and stuff like that. And he's on the same management that we are now. Um, he's working with Rob Graves, our producer, on his new record, and uh, just. A natural relationship for, formed. I think we understand each other. We come from similar backgrounds, um, but we yeah we we thought it'd be a cool opportunity to hit the road together. And he sleeps in the bunk right next to me. He has Hannah Montana sheets. <laughs> uh, he's an awesome guy, and uh, we couldn't be happier to be out here. <laughs> he wants to know how bad the fighting gets between me. <laughs> it was a lot worse when we were young. <laughs> I'm always scared for my life. I run away. I can get me like going in. I think Michael's from since we've known each other since junior high. We've known each other since third grade, but we really started hanging out when we were in junior high or so. And I think Michael's seen the just the the evolution of the twin fighting. Um, on the road, it can get kind of hairy, but um, it's it's kind of a, 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 a you know a love that we have for each other more or less, and we get along really well. We were college roommates. I mean, we've never really been separated, which is you know if you're married, you know sometimes you just got to get out there, you know, get away from your spouse just to have some guy time or girl time. Well, Randy and I are attached at the hip every single day in a tube with wheels out back, and it's. Sometimes it gets a little frustrating, but <laughs> I, won't, I won't go into details about you know fists, you know fists being thrown or anything like that. But I'm just kidding. The question was, what is our biggest challenge, or what has been our biggest challenge as a band? There's a lot. Uh, I think we challenge ourselves to be the best that we can be every day. It's a challenge to wake up in a new city every day. Not Sometimes not know where you are. You're taking a shower in a different room. You're sleeping in a different place. Um, it gets tough being away from home and you miss your family and, and your wife calls and your kids are sick and you're not there. And, um, I think the hardest thing for us is, is, is missing out on life back home. But we knew going into this, this is what we were supposed to be doing. And as long as God wants us here, we're Right, What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened at a show? <laughs> <laughs> we, all, yeah, we all have our stories. You want to say an answer yeah. each one? Yeah. 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 I'll say right away, uh, Michael isn't talking much because Michael is on strict voice rest in between shows and he's got three songs left to track on the new record. He's flying home tomorrow to get those done, so he's real cautious about his vocal cords, but we'll let him talk here for a second. Go ahead. 
<laughs> so I'm the first one to go. Huh? Oh, what's the most embarrassing moment on stage? Is that what it was? Yeah. Question. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Uh. That wasn't really embarrassing. I got hit in the head back in 2006. It wasn't really an embarrassing kind of thing for me because it came out of nowhere. I was facing forward, and Anthony was, it was the first one we had first started, and we were learning how to, like, you know, where we all were at on stage and just kind of how we moved. And uh, Anthony was facing backwards, and I couldn't see him. And it felt like somebody had taken a sledgehammer and slammed it right on top of my head. And for a second there, it was like, you know, the whole world kind of just slowed down, and the whole right side of my arm, and these three fingers went completely numb. Well, the whole side of my arm went numb, and I, I couldn't hold on to the microphone, but these three fingers for a week, like, were still just, like, buzzing. But uh, I fell onto my knees, and then it just felt like, like, all this warm like liquid just started pouring down the left side of my head, which is kind of weird because you get hit on the left side and your right side goes numb. But I guess it's something the way your brain works. I don't know. But uh, anyway, everybody started freaking out. I had no clue what was going on for a couple of seconds there until it started running down my arm. Just all this warm liquid turning into red all over my arm. And I was probably the only person, because I'm pretty, like, easygoing. Like, Armstrong's twins are known for emotion level that goes from, like, zero to ten really quick. And I'm, like, eh, I'm five almost all the time. So I'm pretty easy. So I was, like, the only uh, person that wasn't getting pretty anxious about it. I just got up and just, hey, did somebody grab me a towel? Put it on top of my head and went to the bathroom. I sat down. And I was getting a little lightheaded. Um, Brandy and Anthony, Anthony especially since he even I was freaking out and I take the towel off my head and it just was, it looked like yeah it looked like bubbles of blood that would just like come out and he's just like freaking out thinking like it's the worst thing ever but both Randy and Anthony they took me to the ER and uh, we waited there for yeah it was like two three hours and they stapled seven staples into my head. And you can kind of see it, especially when I shave my head. Um, and it's it's like a permanent indentation that I will have for the rest of my life that will always remind me of our first year of touring. Yes, piece of PRS in my head. So that was pretty amazing. But uh, uh, I think it was on the second tour was spoken. That was the first tour was spoken. On the second tour we spoke in, which was our second tour of all time with them, um, even just touring, um, the one, their guitar player took the staples out of my head. So that was kind of cool. The only reason he was staying calm and he says he was a five is because he didn't see the blood boiling out of his head. So don't pat yourself on the back. My most embarrassing experience, we were in El Paso, Texas, and uh, first note of the show, I jump up and do this, you know, rock thing. But my crotch and my pants ripped completely. Out. I, had, I had a hole that was split wide open, so the rest of the show I'm standing like this. We've both done that, by the way. It's you feel like this rush of air. It's like, yeah, they're ripped. I can't go right away. And I think you rip them not just like a little, it, it rips down to the ankle. So it's, that'll learn you for wearing tight pants on stage. But I still was kind of thinking the most embarrassing. Yeah, I, I gotta, I guess I get, sum it all up for me is when I fall down on stage, I am not a happy camper. I like to run around and do some, you know, spinning around and stuff. And every once in a while, I'll slip in some sweat or, you know, Randy throws a water bottle and it gets slippery or, you know, it's a dusty stage on the side or something, but I'll fall down and I'll hit my elbow or I'll break a guitar in half or something like that. That's always a very embarrassing thing because people look at you and they're just like, ooh. <laughs> it's like the, the show almost stops for a second. There's no guitar half playing or anything, so I, I can't handle it when that happens. But, so if it happens tonight, I don't know, I'm just going to have to walk off stage and just <laughs> send someone else out to play. 
so I, I like to do this thing where I stand on my drum throw and I'm like, yeah. I don't do it much anymore because one time I fell off and a crew guy had to catch me and I was mad. So that's my story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight. So let's give another hand to Zinko.